A lot of people are asking the same simple question right now. How do you actually fly in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024? I've been watching the trends on YouTube and as it turns out, thousands of new simmers are opening the game, spawning on a runway and just staring out the cockpit thinking, what next? Well, if that's you, don't worry. Let's get you flying. Welcome to the Flying Doctor channel. Let's geek into it. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're loaded in, full of ambition, spawning in a fighter jet, top gun music blaring, wearing a headset that makes you look like a rejected NASA intern. Uh, wrong plane, uh, and whilst we're at it, wrong headgear. We need to take it down a notch. We'll start simple, something with wings, wheels, and not nine Gs of force, but don't worry, by the end of this series, we'll get you into a fast jet the right way. Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 does have tutorials, of course. If you go to activities, and then you click on flight training, basic handling as a starter, you can see everything really, and way more than I'm gonna give you here. Also, if you jump into career mode, the tutorials are grouped as certification tracks. So if I click on certification here and you click on private pilot license, you'll see that there's training modules just here to the left. And finally, let's not forget third party add-ons. If you click on the marketplace, one product that I would recommend to you is this Interceptor, something that I've invested in personally. It is absolutely superb and will give you much more detailed uh, tutorials. Honestly though, sometimes you just want to skip the setup and get in the air without feeling like you are in an exam. Let's start with the right plane. Go back to the main menu and onto free flight. Ditch the Super Hornet, type in Cessna here, go for something simpler like the 172 or the 152. The 152 here is smaller, lighter and simpler. It's a true training aircraft. In the cockpit, there's basic analog gauges. The 172 is, yes, a step up. The G in the G1000, where well, you can take it to mean glass, moving maps, autopilot, more navigational info, but there's a lot more to learn here. I'm gonna walk you through the 152 go for a green airport not a brown one the reason that i'd say click on the green and click departure and then start flight is that it's going to have a concrete runway when you're at a larger airport with a big runway you've got more space to play with space is key if anything goes wrong okay before we look at assigning the controls the first thing i want to say is if you open up flight simulator and you're getting this very slight drift you'll find that you won't be able to do anything. What you've got here is a repeating input. It's actually drifting, as you can see, to the bottom right quadrant. What's happening is that, in my case, I have a stick attached with a mini joystick, tiny little things, about a centimeter long, by which I can usually control my views. And I happen to know that the drift is attached to that. So if you've got this problem, and uh, very frustrating though it is, it's easy to solve. If you click on the controller icon at the top there, um, select your uh, stick. If you are using a stick, the culprit for me has been the Rhino um, X56 stick. Go to hardware settings here, and this will allow you to check the sensitivity on all of your controls. In fact, helpful if you want to adjust any of your controls, but we're gonna have to do it here. If you go down the list, um, you can see that you can address the dead zone. So I'm going to increase this to 0.1 and I do this across all of the controls and if you look at um, the output here, you'll see, uh, let's move down. It will sort itself, there we go. Looks like that one. And uh, so yes, yeah, so just adjust your dead zones. That's my only one thing if you do happen to launch into the sim and you are using your controller and then you'll be able to um, move around as ever. Another thing you might wanna do if you go into settings under general, uh, turn on the cockpit interaction system and name tool tips. That might be helpful for you if you're just learning. Instant, so as soon as your cursor hoddle, hovers over a instrument, you'll get the name of it. 
and you get a description of it. I find them quite irritating after a while, uh, but uh, if you're learning, can find it really helpful. Save those and you can drop back. As for the main uh, control, the yoke, you pull up, you press down, you pull left, you pull right. There we are. And uh, that will basically uh, turn the plane for you and raise the pitch or lower the pitch of the plane. We shouldn't forget the rudders, of course. So on my stick, the rudders are assigned to a twist left or right. And it's, obviously, you can't see what's going on. Always good to look outside the aircraft. If you go to any aerodrome, certainly in the UK, you will see this practiced everywhere before every flight as the pilot lines up. It will test all of the flight services. There's my rudder, there's my pitch, there's my uh, yaw there, and I can take my flaps up and down. Uh, your crucial controls basically are the uh, throttle that's here. So uh, my brakes run at the moment, but if we increase the throttle, you'll hear the increase in the engine noise, so I'll just pull that back. Mixture is like your carburetor. It's like mixing the fuel and the air. Uh, you trim the mixture, particularly at higher altitudes, but you don't have to worry about that for takeoff. And then crucially beyond this are the flaps, okay? The flaps give you increased lift and also they allow you to fly at a slower speed before the aircraft stalls. Okay, main instruments to look out for. The artificial horizon indicator here. This is the one that's blue on the top, brown on the bottom. It's indicating the level of your wings here. So the pitch is above or below. And also if the aircraft is turning, if the wings are to one side, uh, then you'll see this orange bar move. Simple as that. In terms of what to look out for on the artificial horizon, once you reach rotate speed, is uh, firstly look for a decent climb angle, which is between five and 10 degrees. So you want to move this orange dot to between those lines. In terms of bank angles, you're looking at 15 to 20 degrees, so that when you turn the aircraft, you're looking to bank and the wings, or one section of the wing, uh, uh, moves to between these two white lines uh, here. Left hand airspeed, how fast am I going? Um, you need to be in the green. Okay, in the white is a bad idea, and because the aircraft will begin to stall, it'll lack lift. Right hand side, altimeter, you can see there, alt, how high am I? As simple as that. Uh, more complex controls, vertical speed is important because if you're going and, and uh, if you're ascending too quickly, you'll certainly lose speed, and again, you're at risk of a stall, so keeping your eye on speed. Just above the co pilot's yoke is the revolutions per minute gauge. This is important to just understand how hard you're working the engine. Uh, for a takeoff, it wants to be, well, throttle all the way forward. Full throttle is 2,300 to 2,400 RPM. And uh, when you are looking to land, you want to drop it down to about 1,500. Okay, we'll model some of that later. Takeoff speed will be around 55 knots. That's when we rotate. And uh, there's a best rate of climb around, it's around about 67 uh, knots. Turn indicator here. Uh, when you turn the aircraft, the aircraft sort of slips in the air and the turn indicator makes sure by keeping this ball in the middle of that um, vacuum tube there, right above that you've got a clear turn and you're not pushing the edge of the circle, so to speak. That's the way that I would understand things. The way in which you keep the all within these two lines is that you're using rudder inputs but we won't worry about that at the moment it's not life and death and yes you do have a compass this will prove useful to you especially when you are looking to circle an airport because you know the bearing that you took off from one important thing to note in the Cessna flaps are at 10% what they want to be for your landing this is set automatically but easy to easy to miss um, when you are just spawning on a runway as opposed to when you get in the plane and then you have to work through a checklist. So yeah, don't forget your flaps. So roll out and take off. Number one, we increase our throttle, push it all the way forward, and we are looking to roll the aircraft to 50 knots. Some people find it helpful just to put a little bit of forward pressure on the yoke because the aircraft will naturally want to lift itself off the ground. In fact, you won't really need to uh, pull back. Once we are rolling down the runway and 
then we move into rotating and being airborne just as a reminder we want this orange dot to be between the 10 and the 5 here so somewhere in the middle um, notice that you'll find how sensitive your controls are don't overcompensate uh, as well uh, altitude we don't need to worry about that all we need to worry about is the fact that we're climbing and you'll be able to see that because yep you can look out the window and uh, vertical speed you can keep an eye on this as i'm flying but you can see it gives you an indicator of the rate of your vertical climb if you're climbing too quickly which shouldn't be happening because your little dot should be between the five and the ten here if you time too quickly you will start to lose uh, uh, air speed and then when you'll lose lift okay so that's where we're at let's uh, get off the ground and uh, yeah let's get in the air which is what we wanted in the first place but hopefully i've saved you quite a lot of time so increase the throttle making sure that you've got your brake off i'm going to push a little bit down on the yoke and i am just adjusting against that yaw that happens naturally because of the shape of the propeller and we're at rotate now if you notice i've just taken my pressure off and i'm already in the air now i'm just going to pull up a little bit more just so that that orange marker is between the five and the ten degree climb and there we go Lo lovely just a gentle climb in uh, the air though just keep an eye on that make sure that your speed is in the green as you can see it is there everything's hunky-dory we can see the altitude meter just moving around and yes we can even afford to have a little bit of a look around the aircraft now as for turning uh, let's just make a slight uh, turn here in fact I could, i've taken my hands off the controls at the moment and things are pretty uh, stable don't recommend you do that but 15 and 20 degrees here uh, you can see i can tell you straight away that my climb angle's just dropping down a little bit can you just see that happening i'm just keeping an eye on that there um, but when I'm looking to bank, I'm looking to bank between these two longer lines here. So let's uh, just do that, just as you get an opportunity to turn the aircraft, okay? So I can actually hold this uh, rate of climb here, and I can turn very gently the yoke just to the left-hand side. That's just I'll lose a little bit of speed in the turn, but there we go. There is a 15 degree turn whilst we're climbing as well. And again, if we just turn to the right, let's level out the aircraft. We can keep the uh, climb going at five degrees or higher as we want, but we might want to just level the wings and separate, set all the horizon down. Remember that the wings sit on the horizon. They don't sit across the horizon. So, what about landing this thing? Well, first thing, always keep the runway in sight, and I've given you the basic parameters. Um, yes, I may well be flying low, but things are very stable here, and I'm looking to increase my altitude to around a thousand feet. I'm going to go and continue along this bearing. I'm heading in a southerly direction. I'm going to turn, and I'm going to come back in. What am I aiming for? As I say, a thousand feet, and also you can see that the RPM is in fact quite high here. I'm looking to reduce this RPM on this right hand dial down to uh, 1500. Don't forget that what will lower the aircraft isn't just the position of the nose, it's the amount of power. So the aircraft can be sitting level, yet it can still be losing height. And that really is what we want for a stable defense. We don't want our nose pointing down at the runway thinking, oh great, we're gonna land in a second. So here we are, we're just uh, making a turn now. And uh, look, you can see the slippage here, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, there's the slippage just down there. Uh, you can see I would really be, should really be applying rudder to try and bring that ball into between the lines. There we go. Okay, so um, yes, we're turning now. We're just, just dropping down just slightly below a thousand feet whoa there we are that looks a little bit um, shocked there but we're lining up now what's interesting here is if you're line la if you're landing in a large airport you can see here um, that I have 
uh, these lights at the end of the runway, pappy lights they're called. Uh, they're a mixture of white and red. If they're all red, then you're dead. If they're white, then you're too high. Uh, if they're too red and too right, it means you're approaching the glide path. As for how I'm trying to manage this, I've reduced the power down. You can see here, we're actually quite low and we're at risk of uh, dropping a bit quicker than we should do. So I may well, yes, increase the power slightly, but I'm also watching the glide slope and just balancing uh, what is happening. Uh, it's a helpful hint is to keep the try and keep the runway in a particular area around the windscreen and to, to maintain that there we are there's my little square here and to try and maintain that as you uh, def descend you can see me just putting on the power here a little bit because I'm aware that I'm below the glide slope and, I'm, and that allows me just to lift the load lows slightly and I'm looking to just resolve that as we move forward. Notice that the wings here are level. You know, we're, we're, uh, what the attitude is we're not, we're not, as I say, lowering the nose, although it's just lowered there. Uh, but uh, there we go to get back on the glide slope. So there we are, just dropping things down. Uh, the speed is about 70 knots, uh, which is fine. And uh, I kind of sometimes like to come in at uh, 60 knots, I'm fine with that. It just means if anything goes wrong, you've got m more of an effort to put in the power and for the aircraft to recover. You can see things just dropping down gently, uh, 60 knots, and uh, there we go. And I will just land somewhere near these uh, little piano keys just here. Just gently lift the nose up as you, uh, as you uh, touch down. There we are, and uh, off we uh, go. Yeah, and um, once you've got these things sort of lined up, it's not actually that hard to uh, take off in a jet. You just kind of push the power forward and look, it kind of takes off naturally. We'll need to sort out some landing gear, I am sure. And uh, yeah, our flaps have come up and uh, yeah, up and away. So yeah, that's how you uh, fly an aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2025. Not a crash course because we didn't actually crash. So hope that's helpful to folks. Take care, stay safe. And don't forget, if you like what you see, please like us and subscribe us so that you know what is next available. As I say, I have a tendency to produce things that are a little bit more advanced, but I can see on the YouTube uh, kind of questioning on the trends, there's a good number of people saying, how do I fly in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2025? Well, it's not perfect. But it's designed to get you in the air and uh, to get you confident and yeah you can go through the tutorials nobody likes an exam but if you want to jump in that's how you do it take care folks stay safe